Well, hello everyone, my name is Laura. This is my channel, Laura's Little Library, and welcome to today's video, which are talking about my five star predictions from earlier this year. Were they actually five stars? Let's find out. So right at the beginning of 2022, I made a list of 10 books that I thought were going to be five star reads for me. And I was looking back on this list um, earlier in the in November, and I realized that I read all the books on that list except for one. So I went ahead and I read it. So I read all 10 books on this list, which for someone who forgot about my five star predictions for basically the entire year. I was pretty happy at that, about that. I was pretty stoked. I thought I was gonna have to do a reading vlog of reading like four or five of them. No. Anyway, so now that I have read all of them, I'm gonna go through and say whether or not they were actually five stars and see how good my predictions were, which will be very interesting for the predictions that I will make for next year. So I will be doing this again because I very much enjoyed it. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when I post that video for my five star predictions for 2023. One of the first books that I had picked out as a possible five star read for this year was a sequel to a book that I had read previously. I own the first book, I loved it. The first book itself wasn't a five star, but I thought the second book very well could be, and that was Love Boat Reunion by Abigail Hingwen. The first book is Love Boat Taipei. And you are following side characters from the first book in this one and their romance and kind of planning a reunion, so getting everybody from the first book back together. This book was amazing. It features an Asian woman in STEM in college and uh, her romance. Now the real question though was, was this a five star read for me? Yes. Yes, it was. I enjoyed every single moment of it. I enjoyed every aspect of it. I don't think this could have been done any better. Like the nostalgia from the first one, but then brought up even higher. The glitz and glam of them going back to Taipei and having this reunion, but also the hardships that they faced and how they support each other through it and just it was a five star. I'm so happy. Now, the next one I'm gonna talk about was Happily Ever Afters by Elise Bryant. This follows our main character who loves writing romance novels, but then when she gets into this really good art school, she has this major mental block and has a writer's block and cannot write anymore. So she decides to create her own romance in order to inspire herself. So, was this a five star read for me? No, but it was close. It was a four star read. It got a little boring and a little slow at some parts and I enjoyed the premise of it, but then it just got to be repetitive of just nothing happening, of her not writing, pushing friends away. It, yeah, it didn't quite live up to the expectation, but it was still very good. The third prediction I had made was Tokyo Ever After by Emiko Jean, and this follows our main character who is Japanese American, and she finds out that her father is actually the Prince of Japan, and so she decides to go to Japan and to meet him and kind of be, learn what it would be like if she was a Japanese princess, and it's very like uh, Princess Diaries-esque, but with uh, Japan, and was this a five star read? Yes. I absolutely freaking loved this book. I started reading it and already I was feeling such strong attachment to the book and the characters that I started a vlog just for that book, for that day that I read that book because every couple of chapters I would have to stop and like express my feelings of enjoyment or giddiness for this book and so that's why I did the vlog. So I will have that linked but I had adored this book, five star. The second book, Tokyo Dreaming, is out and I haven't read it yet because I had heard some people don't love it as much as the first one, but I really want to. So I'm trying to like let some time pass, lower my expectations, but I'm so excited for Tokyo Dreaming. <laughs> the next book that I predicted was a five stars was going to be Dial A for Aunties and this is by Jessie Q. Sutanto. So this follows our main character 
who is a photographer in this wedding business that her and her four aunts have. Each aunt specializes in a different area of getting ready for a wedding. And she accidentally goes on a very bad date and the guy ends up dead. And so she enlists the help of her aunties to help get rid of the body while they are also trying to put on a wedding. And was this a five star read? Yes. Yes, it was. I I loved this book. The the balance between like whimsy comedy and like not it's not dark. It's not dark by any means, but like the fact that there is a dead body and they were trying to get rid of it. Like it was just the perfect amount of whimsy and comedy, but also like cultural aspects and like putting on the wedding. It was such a fun, enjoyable read. I loved our main character. I love her romance. And obviously, I mean, not romance with the dead guy, obviously, but she does, it does get better for her, I am happy to say. And just the relationship that she has with her aunts and that they have with each other is just so fun and entertaining to read. And then since then, I have read the second book, the sequel that came out after it, and it's been a good time. Moving on, the next prediction was Book Lovers by Emily Henry. I was so excited for this book to come out. Our main character is Nora, who is a literary agent, and she has this, like, workplace enemies to lovers, but they're on vacation with an editor, and they end up going to this same small town unknowingly, and it's an enemies to lovers. And so the question, was this five stars? No. I think this was the most shocking one that was not a five stars. I, here's the thing. It was pitched as enemies to lovers, but I don't think it was. I think they had one little, like, not even a disagreement, but just like, she was bummed and he didn't have the best first impression of her. And then they were like, okay, so we're co-workers. We're gonna work on this thing. And then it bloomed into a romance. This was still a 4.5 out of 5 star, like it was so close to a 5 star, but I'm so surprised that it wasn't a 5 star for me, but there were just some other elements of the book that I was like, mm, I wish this could have been done better, or this shouldn't have been as prominent as it was, and mm, 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 mm. but I'm still super excited for her next book to come out next year. Next up was The Henna Artist and this follows our main character in the 1950s in India and she is uh, a spinster and she wants to really buy her own house and so she's been working hard as a henna artist for the upper class women, kind of learning all their secrets, listening to their gossip. So I thought this was going to be a five stars book. Was it a five star book? No. This was like a three star book for me. It was really slow and completely character driven which is kind of not my vibe there really just wasn't a plot and I didn't care about the gossip because I didn't really know any of the characters or what was going on so there is another book but I don't think I'm actually gonna read it so I can see how other people love it but it just was not down my alley like I still think it's a well-written book it was just not down my alley but also look up the trigger warnings then we had The Last Graduate by Naomi Novik, and this is the second book in the Scholomance trilogy. I read the first book and I loved it. It was actually my favorite book of 2021. And so I was like, well, obviously if it's my favorite book, then the second book is definitely going to be five stars, right? So it follows our main character and it's a dark academia kind of magic. Like it's Harry Potter, but really dark. It's amazing. So they, they go to the school, there are no adults, no teachers, the school is teaching these kids, and it's all very, like, the school is also kind of trying to kill them at the same time. The second book, was it a five-star read? No. Very close, though. Again, it was a four point, it was like a four-star, 4.5. I, I loved the continuation of our characters, but there were just some misses, like, kind of, Again, I think the books like slowed down, the pacing was off, I wasn't as invested in the problem that was kind of the main plot of this book. I was like, why is this really a problem? I don't quite see how it affects things. Um, but you did dive a lot more into like the school's history and how 
how it why it works the way it does which was really cool I still highly recommend the first one I mean I still rated the second book very highly and I'm super excited to read the third one it just the second one wasn't quite a five star read then the next one is The Merciless Ones by Namina Forna. I just talked about this in my November wrap up. This was the last book I had to read for my five star predictions. This is the second book after The Gilded Ones and it follows our main character who lives in the society where they test women's blood and if it runs red then the normal humans that's totally fine but if it runs gold then they are demons and they must repent for their sins and they get taken away to fight for the king and his army against these creatures who are terrorizing the land. I very much enjoyed the first one and I very much enjoyed this one but the big question was it a five star read? No. So again, if you watched my November wrap up, I do go into detail about this book. There were just a lot of terms that was very difficult to keep track of, but then it made kind of understanding the book a little bit difficult. And I, I wasn't quite as attached to the characters in this one like I was to the first one. And like the ending was really good, but it took a while to kind of get reinvested into it. So still four out of five star read, still very highly rated, just not a five star. Moving on, the next five star prediction that I had was Caraval by Stephanie Garber. This is a well-loved trilogy. A lot of people here on booktube love it and on bookstagram they really like it. So I thought, you know, it's about time for me to read this. So it follows our main character and her sister and they don't like their family life. They do not get along well with their father. He wants to marry them off for money and there's this big carnival event that happens and you can only go if you're invited. These two girls get invited to go to this big event and so they run away and they find that not it is not as they seem as the main character's sister gets taken and she is the object of the game. Literally, they have to find her sister and that is how you win the game. So first book in a trilogy. I actually ended up binging the entire trilogy and I'm now working on Stephanie Garber's other series which is connected to this main trilogy. I'm caught up on that series which normally takes me forever to work away through a series so there's the question. Was it a five star read? Yes. I love this. I love this so much. The like dark whimsical vibes were perfect. The twists and turns, the who are the characters really? Which boy does she fall for? Everything was just on point. How do we get there? It was, like I said, dark, whimsical, carnival game. Like, if that sounds like something you're interested in, please pick it up if you haven't already. It's definitely worth all of the hype. Now we are on to the final book on the list. So my final five star prediction for 2022 was Blade of Secrets by Trisha Levenseller. This follows our main character who is a blacksmith with high general anxiety. And she runs her blacksmith shop with her sister. One day a warlord comes by and requests a very powerful weapon and our blacksmith makes the weapon even more powerful than she meant to and she realizes that she cannot give it to the warlord so she runs away with it with her sister and a couple other people and they have to figure out how to defeat the warlord with this super powerful weapon so the question is was well, is it a five star read yes yes it was holy <laughs> i loved this so I read Blade of Secrets, I read Master of Iron that came out, and then I read all of Trisha Levenseller's backlist because I loved these two books so much. The anxiety rep in our character was amazing. So anxiety is different for everyone. I also have anxiety, but I was able to identify with a lot of feelings with our main character. Her anxiety is very similar to how mine works, so I just felt so seen in this book and so represented. And to have a character with anxiety like I do be the main character in an epic fantasy book, 
it blew my mind. It made me so happy. I love these sisterly dynamics. The romance was amazing. You learn so much about the world. And then the second book was also amazing. So again, even if you're not like super into fantasy, I would still recommend this because even for those who aren't super into fantasy, I feel like this is a really good book to read. It just blew me away. I was so happy with it. The world building, the characters, the magic. Just I got emotional reading this book. Like it just it hit me so hard in all the right places. Those are the 10 books that I read as five star predictions for this year. Half of them were actually five stars. So half were and half weren't, but none of them were terrible. Like my lowest rated one was a three star, but most of the ones that weren't five stars were four stars. So I was very close to predicting the books that I would love. So that was really cool. And it kind of gives me a little bit of confidence for like my upcoming list of 10 books that I'm predicting are five stars. So yeah, I'm excited. And if you're excited for that video, again, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified for when that video goes up. I am also posting three times a week going into January because I have so much content that I was just very inspired to do. So yeah, comment down below some of your favorite five stars from this year. Also, I have bookish social media link down below that you can find me there. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and are looking forward to more videos like this. But until I see you all in the next video, I wish you Happy reading!